the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to worship on this Passion Sunday. Today we enter the holiest week of the Christian year. We begin to tell the story this morning of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And then we begin to walk the way of the cross, as we will do throughout this week, gathering this morning, and then again on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then finally next Sunday we arrive at Easter. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus said to of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is it the kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with, with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you picked up a palm branch from church yesterday, or if you cut a branch from your yard or even from a plant in your house, I invite you to raise it up as we speak these words of blessing. Christ be with you. We praise you, O oh God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread branches and garments along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If we were gathering at church this morning, we might leave the building and make a procession down the street and back to the church, proclaiming to the whole neighborhood that Christ brings a world of peace and compassion and love. In previous years, we've carried signs proclaiming what we pray the world can be, a world that is at peace, a world where there are no weapons of war and where people reconcile and build just and equitable systems. So for today, you may take your palm branch and march through your neighborhood, praying for God's reign to come. 
or parade around your family room this morning while we sing. Either way, we are captured by the vision of Jesus, and we carry that into the city through this ritual and through our lives. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. 
with the same mind be in you those in Christ Jesus, who, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something not to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. In only two days, the eight-day festival of Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread would begin. The high priest and religion scholars were looking for a way they could seize Jesus by stealth and kill him. They agreed that it should not be done during Passover week. We don't want the crowds up in arms. Jesus was at Bethany, a guest of Simon the leper. While he was eating dinner, a woman came up carrying a bottle of very expensive perfume. Opening the bottle, she poured it on his head. Some of the guests became furious among themselves. That's criminal, a sheer waste. This perfume could have been sold for well over a year's wages and handed out to the poor. They swelled up in anger, nearly bursting with indignation over her. Let her alone. Why are you giving her a hard time? She has just done something wonderfully significant for me. You will have the poor with you every day for the rest of your lives. Whenever you feel like it, you can do something for them. Not so with me. She did what she could when she could. She pre-anointed my body for burial. And you can be sure that wherever in the whole world the message is preached, what she just did is going to be talked about admiringly. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the cabal of high priests, determined to betray him. They couldn't believe their ears and promised to pay him well. He started looking for just the right moment to hand him over.
On the first of the days of unleavened bread, the day they prepare the Passover sacrifice, his disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations so you can eat the Passover meal? Go into the city. A man carrying a water jug will meet you. Follow him. Ask the owner of whichever house he enters. The teacher wants to know, where is my guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will show you to a spacious second story room, swept and ready. Prepare for us there. The disciples left, came to the city, found everything just as he had told them, and prepared the Passover meal. After sunset, he came with the twelve. As they were at the supper table eating, Jesus said, I have something hard but important to say to you. One of you is going to hand me over to the conspirators, one who at this very moment is eating with me. Stunned, they started asking one after another. It isn't me, is is it? Is it? it? It's one of the 12, one who eats with me out of the same bowl. In one sense, it turns out that the Son of Man is entering into a way of treachery well marked by the scriptures. No surprises here. In another sense, the man who turns him in turns traitor to the Son of Man. Better never to have been born than do this. In the course of their meal, having taken and blessed the bread, he broke it and gave it to them. Then he said, Take this is my body. Taking the chalice, he gave it to them, thanking God, and they all drank from it. He said, this is my blood, God's new covenant, poured out for many people. I will not be drinking wine again until the new day, when I drink it in the kingdom of God. They sang a hymn and then went directly to Mount Olives. You're all going to feel that your world is falling apart and that it's my fault. There's a scripture that says, I will strike the shepherd. The sheep will go helter skelter. But after I'm raised up, I will go ahead of you, leading the way to Galilee. Peter blurted out. Even if everyone else is ashamed of you and things fall to pieces, I won't be. Don't be so sure. Today. This very night, in fact, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Peter blustered in protest. Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. All the others said the same thing. They came to an area called Gethsemane. Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him. He plunged into a sinkhole of dreadful agony. I feel bad enough right now to die. Stay here. Keep vigil with me. Going a little ahead, he fell to the ground and prayed for a way out. Abba, Father, you can, can't you? Get me out of this. Take this cup away from me. But please, not what I want. What do you want? 
He came back and found them sound asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, you went to sleep on me? Can't you stick it out with me for a single hour? Stay alert, be in prayer, so you don't enter the danger zone without even knowing it. Don't be naive. Part of you is eager, ready for anything in God. But another part is as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. He then went back and prayed the same prayer. Returning, he again found them sound asleep. They simply couldn't keep their eyes open, and they didn't have a plausible excuse. He came back a third time and said, Are you going to sleep all night? No, you've slept enough. Time is up. The Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's get going. My betrayer has arrived. No sooner were the words out of his mouth when Judas, the one out of the twelve, showed up, and with him a gang of ruffians, sent by the high priest, religion scholars, and leaders, brandishing swords and clubs. The betrayer had worked out a signal with them. The one that I kiss, that's the one. Seize him. Make sure he doesn't get away. He went straight to Jesus and said, Rabbi! And kissed him. The others then grabbed him and roughed him up. One of the men standing there unsheathed his sword, swung and came down on the chief priest's servant, lopping off the man's ear. Jesus said to them, What is this? Coming after me with swords and clubs as if I were a dangerous criminal? Day after day, I've been sitting in the temple teaching, and you never so much as lifted a hand against me. What you, in fact, have done is confirm the prophetic writings. All the disciples cut and ran. A young man was following along. All he had on was a bedsheet. Some of the men grabbing, grabbed him, but he got away, running off naked, leaving them holding the sheet. Jesus to the chief priest, where the high priest, religious leaders, and scholars had gathered together. Peter followed at a safe distance until they got to the chief priest's courtyard, where he mingled with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. The high priest, conspiring with the Jewish council, looked high and low for evidence against Jesus by which they could sentence him to death. They found nothing. Plenty of people were willing to bring in false charges, but nothing added up, and they ended up canceling each other out. Then a few of them stood up and lied. We heard him say, I'm going to tear down this temple built by hard labor, and in three days build another without lifting a hand. But even they couldn't agree exactly. In the middle of this, the chief priest stood up and asked Jesus, what do you have to say to the accusation? Jesus was silent. He said nothing. Chief priest tried again, this time asking, Are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed? Yes, I am. And you'll see it yourself. The son of man seated at the right hand of the mighty one, arriving on the clouds of heaven. The chief priest lost his temper. Ripping his clothes, he yelled, did you hear that? After that, do we need witnesses? You heard the blasphemy. Are you going to stand for it? They condemned him, one and all, 
the sentence, death. Some of them started spitting at him. They blindfolded his eyes, then hit him saying, who hit you? Prophesy. The guards punching and slapping took him away. While all this was going on, Peter was down in the courtyard. One of the chief priest's servant girls came in and seeing Peter warming himself there, looked hard at him and said, You were with the Nazarene, Jesus. I don't know what you're talking about. He went out on the porch. A rooster crowed. The girl spotted him and began telling the people standing around. He's one of them. He denied it again. After a little while, the bystanders brought it up again. You've got to be one of them. You've got Galilean written all over you. Now Peter got really nervous and swore. I never laid eyes on this man you're talking about. Just then, the rooster crowed a second time. Peter remembered how Jesus had said, Before a rooster crows twice, you'll deny me three times. He collapsed in tears. first light, the high priest, with the religious leaders and scholars, arranged a conference with the entire Jewish council. After tying Jesus securely, they took him out and presented him to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Say so. The high priest let loose a barrage of accusations. Aren't you going to answer anything? That's quite a list of accusations. Still, he said nothing. Pilate was impressed, really impressed. It was a custom at the feast to release a prisoner, anyone the people asked for. There was one prisoner called Barabbas, locked up with the insurrectionists who had committed murder during the uprising against Rome. As the crowd came up and began to present its petition for him to release a prisoner, Pilate anticipated them. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews to you? Pilate knew by this time that it was through sheer spite that the high priest had turned Jesus over to him. But the high priest by then had worked up the crowd to ask for the release of Barabbas. Pilate came back. So what do I do with this man you call king of the Jews? Nail him to a cross. But for what crime? But they yelled all the louder. Nail him to a cross. Pilate gave the crowd what it wanted, set Barabbas free, and turned Jesus over for whipping and crucifixion. The soldiers took Jesus into the palace called Praetorium and called together with the entire brigade. 
They dressed him up in purple and put a crown plated from a thorn brush on his head. Then they began their mockery. Bravo, king of the Jews. They banged on his head with a club, spit on him, and knelt down in mock worship. After they had had their fun, they took off the purple cape and put his own clothes back on him. Then they marched out to nail him to the cross. There was a man walking by, coming from work, Simon from Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They made him carry Jesus' cross. The soldiers brought Jesus to Golgotha, meaning Skull Hill. They offered him a mild painkiller, wine mixed with myrrh, but he wouldn't take it. And they nailed him to the cross. They divided up his clothes and threw dice to see who would get them. They nailed him up at nine o'clock in the morning. The charge against him, the king of the Judeans, was printed on a poster. Along with him, they crucified two criminals, one to his right, the other to his left. People passing along the road jeered, shaking their heads in mock lament. You bragged that you could tear down the temple and then rebuild it in three days. So show us your stuff. Save yourself. If you're really God's son, come down from that cross. The high priest, along with the religion scholars, were right there mixing it up with the rest of them, having a great time poking fun at him. He saved others, but he can't save himself. Messiah. Messiah is he? King of Israel? Then let him climb down from the cross. We'll all believe, be believers then. Even the men crucified alongside him joined in the mockery. At noon, the sky became extremely dark. The darkness lasted three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus groaned out of the depths, crying loudly, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders who heard him said, Listen, he's calling out for Elijah. Someone ran off, soaked a sponge in sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him drink, saying, Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. But Jesus, with a loud cry, gave his last breath. At that moment, the temple curtain ripped right down the middle. When the Roman captain standing guard in front of him saw that he had quit breathing, he said, This has to be the Son of God. There were a woman watching from a distance, among them Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and Joseph and Salome. When Jesus was in Galilee, these women followed and served him and had come up with him to Jerusalem. Late in the afternoon, since it was the day of preparation, that is, Sabbath Eve, Joseph of Arimathea, a highly respected member of the Jewish council, came. He was one who lived expectantly on the lookout for the kingdom of God. Working up his courage, he went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate questioned whether he could be dead that soon and called for the captain to verify that he was really dead. Assured by the captain, he gave Joseph the corpse. Having already perched his a linen shroud, Joseph took him down, wrapped him in the shroud, placed him in a tomb that had been cut into the rock, and rolled a large stone across the opening. Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of Joseph, watched the burial.
On this Sunday of the Passion, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. O God of majesty, mercy, and might, hear our prayers for the Church around the world, as Christians in every land journey this week with Christ to the cross. During this holiest week of the year, year which we celebrate once again this year in the midst of a pandemic, Sustain your people in the promise that life triumphs over death. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear our prayers for the earth, that it be saved from pollution and disregard, for endangered animals, that they and their habitats be protected, and for scientists, that their knowledge of your earth will guide our society's choices. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For peace throughout the world, for an end to hatred, racism, and domestic terrorism. For all elected leaders, that they would serve the common good. For those who work for compromise rather than surrendering to gridlock. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For the countries hardest hit by the coronavirus, for the federal, fearful and the sick and their families, for medical personnel and hospitals, for those who await their opportunity to receive a vaccine, hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, for judges, law clerks, court employees, and jurors who ensure the fair administration of justice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For the people of Boulder, Colorado, and especially those grieving loved ones who were killed there this week. For an end to gun violence. For the wisdom to enact reforms that would prevent acts of mass murder. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For those whose needs we know, and for those whose needs are hidden from view, for all who are sick, for the hungry, for the dying, and for those we name before you now. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Giving thanks for this holy week, for the support of our community of faith, and for the saints 
who struggled through life and died in you. We praise you for your saving love and for the promise of resurrection. Here, your mercy is great. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we enter into the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves to his mission of mercy and justice. If you would like to make an offering for the work of Gloria Day Lutheran Church in this city and in the world, you can do so now by the link on your screen. We also continue our second offering for March. It's March Food Share Month. This is our last Sunday to collect funds to feed hungry people through Francis Basket, uh, the neighborhood house food pantry near the church. Thank you for your generosity so far. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Hey! 
holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and called them to return to you. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this bread and wine that we have gathered and wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, where there is bread and wine, there is Jesus. Taste and see that God is good. If you are gathered with others this morning, I invite you to serve one another bread, saying the words that we say in church. This is the body of Christ given for you. If you are gathered by yourself this morning, you are not alone. We are gathered together as a community. But hear these words spoken to you. This is the body of Christ given for you. And now take the cup and speak the words that we say to one another. The blood of Christ shed for you. And if you are gathering on your own, hear these words spoken to your heart. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A few announcements this morning. Join us for coffee hour immediately after worship today. You can join us on Zoom at gloriadaycoffeehour.com. This morning we enter into Holy Week, and on Thursday we begin the three days. In past years, we've shared a meal together on Monday, Thursday. We'll do that again this year. We invite you to prepare a simple meal, but join us on Zoom for a dinner worship service. If you're not able to join us at 6 p.m., there'll be a YouTube resource available for you to use in your home. Our other Holy Week services will be at 6 p.m. for both Good Friday and the Easter Vigil. Easter Sunday morning worship will be at 9.30 a.m. here on YouTube. God bless you as you walk with Christ through these holy days. You are what God created you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. May God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.